a shaking. There is certain things that has happened in the earth that is causing tremors. Is that right? Some of the shaking is bigger than, than some of the other shaking. It's like the unstableness in the earth at the moment. And there's a shaking in us personally as believers. And there's a shaking. We are feeling the effects of something that shifted in the Spirit. And I'm saying this by the Spirit. We are feeling things in the natural because something had already happened in the Spirit in the earth. And I want to announce prophetically today that because of the shaking, a wave is on its way. Amen? A ground swell is gathering. We're still in the tremors. We're still in the after effect of the tremors. But a ground swell is approaching. Faith has the ability to cause us to be able to face the tremors, face the shaking, face the pain of shaking. Why? Because we already know what comes next. All right? What comes next? Resurrection. We already know. Why do they call it Good Friday? What is good about Friday? Jesus on the cross, he was whipped, he was crucified, the blood, it was gruesome. What is good about Friday? It's the fact that we already know resurrection is coming. So we can face the shaking because I have confidence on the third day he's going to rise. We ha already have that knowledge. Amen? Now the principle is the same. If we say the principle is true that we first have to die so that we can resurrect, in the crushing and in the shaking, you and I today can have confidence and faith to face it because resurrection is coming. I know victory is coming. Come on. And I see today so many, and even myself, in the shaking, lose perspective, and we settle and we think this is it, but this is not it. I've been sent here today to tell you the shaking in your life is not the new normal. Resurrection is coming. This is not going to just remain. You're not going to just remain in this place. But after the pruning comes fruitfulness and fruit bearing. God has already caused a wave to be released. There's already a ground swell gathering as the wave comes. Now I'm also, you won't believe it, but I grew up in the West Coast. I did do surfing, was not very good at it, so I do a lot of bodyboarding when I was younger. And when you're in the ocean and you wait for the wave, you see how the wave rises. You're in the water on the board and then you feel the wave rise and the ground swell coming and then you paddle like crazy to get to the place where you can ride the wave. Is that fine? I'm telling you there's a ground swell rising. And this move, harvester, I want to say to you, do not take on the position of defeatism. Do not take on the position of defeatism. You as an individual believer, do not take on the position of defeatism. For a ground swell is rising. I have a future. I have a future hope. I know God is about to do some things. I have experiential knowledge. This is not the first time I've been shaken. This is not the first time I've gone through suffering trials or temptation or afflictions. And every time when I've gone through this, there was a restoration, there was a resurrection, there was a blessing, there was fruit. Hallelujah! I know what comes next, and because I know what comes next, I live by faith, I walk by faith. It is no longer I that live, but it is Christ that lives in me. Mark, die, self, do it, but will upstand. Some of you, your gravel is stirring, and self wants to rise up, and self in his self-righteousness wants to feel sorry for himself, for the things that he's facing. But by God, hear me today. I walk by faith. I live by faith because I've got this assurance. Resurrection is coming. Amen? Change. 
And the change will elevate you as that wave elevates. It lifts you as you sit on it. The ground swell will lift you. And it will move you. A tremendous momentum, a tremendous energy is released. I declare by the Spirit in this body, a resurrection is coming. A ground swell is approaching. A mighty wave has been generated. And it is on its way. Hallelujah. So, the third day has approached and Jesus rose from the dead. One of that scriptures that uh, Arnu read this morning, one of those verses says in verse 2 of Matthew 28, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and other Mary came to the tomb, and behold, there was a great earthquake. Did you hear that? Whenever God is ready to do the next thing, there's an action, a reaction in the natural. Things shake. Do you hear that? Someone once told me, when you're running downhill, your mind prepares for the next uphill. And when you're on the uphill, prepare your mind because a downhill is approaching. So stop crying on the uphill. Start rejoicing in the uphill because a downhill is approaching. Do you get that? You see, some of us, we're in the uphill and we're crying because of the shaking. We're crying because of the difficulty. We're crying because, hey, we just play. No, 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 no. It's not off the ronde. It's the way it's going to work. And when you're on the downhill, prepare your heart because soon now we'll face an uphill and I'll be ready because I walk by faith. I live by faith. Come on. I have my being by faith. I no longer live. If God gives it, God already will provide for me the provision that I need. God will already provide for me the energy I need. God will already provide for me the way of escape. Come on. That's the Word of God. I can do it. And we are doing it. Come on. Look at yourself and your wife and just say, I do not all clear. In the midst of the shaking, I am maturing. I'm growing. I'm letting go of things that is unnecessary. I'm already walking by faith. I have already died to myself. And I can smile and I can rejoice and I can have joy because resurrection is coming. Hallelujah. So we can face the shaking with confidence. We can take the shaking. We can deal with the shaking. And we can live with it because resurrection is a reality. And the earth was, and a great earthquake happened, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. My, oh my, all things that God is busy with, if there's a shifting in the spirit, tectonic plates move. Some of us have seen some tectonic plates move over this last two years. Tremendous shifts, tremendous changes. And it has caused us to move with new vigor and new energy towards what comes next. And the angel announced, He is risen. We will rise again. Resurrection is coming. A ground swell is approaching. Instead of being consumed with a shaking, prepare for the wave. You have to prepare for the wave. When you're not prepared for the wave, oh dear. When a tsunami wave comes, where is the best place to be? On top of it, eh? Not in front of it. Is that true? So there were guys... In the ocean, when that big tsunami hit a few years back, there were guys snorkeling and swimming, and they were on this boat. And they were in the ocean and on top of it, and they did experience the strength of what came under the water. But they were able to, to get up and into the boat without too much issues. 
There were fishermen in boats on the ocean who felt the ground swell, but they did not face the wave. Amen? And they were okay. Hear me today. If God moves, you can either move with Him, being swept up with Him on top of the wave, or if you are opposing what God is doing through rebelliousness and selfishness and self-seeking, the power of what God is getting ready to do in this earth is so big that it might just devastate the rest of the things that you think cannot be shaken anymore. You hear me? Do not try to face the wave. You need to learn to serve the wave. This can be one of the most exciting times in your life, the next few years where God is going to do what He needs to do. I don't know what's going to come next. I just know the intensity of the shaking uh, is an indication of what the resurrection and what the fruitfulness of what comes next will hold. Amen? The intensity of what happened on the cross was so severe that it had a physical manifestation in the earth breaking open. Today, I say to you, the evidence of what God is doing in the shaking is a a measurement, an indicator to us for what comes next. The wave, the length of the wave, the type of the wave, the impact of the wave, we can measure because we now see the impact of the shaking. Come on! Do not oppose it. If we want to be able to to serve this wave that is coming, we need to center on Christ. Number two thing that I want you to hear is we need to push the refresh button. Refresh. Jeremiah 31, 25. For I have sustained the weary soul and I have replenished every sorrowful soul, the Lord says. And in Acts 3, verse 18 to 21, but those things which God foretold by the mouth of His prophets, that Christ would suffer, has been fulfilled. Do you agree with the Scripture? Yeah. Verse 19, Repent therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Listen, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Through your repentance... Through your meekness, you can enter into times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. In the shaking, we need refreshing in the presence of the Lord. That's why God is pouring out His Spirit in such a wonderful way in services all over the earth right now so that there'll be a refreshing. Verse 20, and that, that He may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before whom heaven must receive until the times of reformation of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of His holy prophets and uh, since the world began. Two things. In the time of shaking, in the time where we're in right now, we acknowledge this is it which the prophets have spoken about. Times of refreshings are available in the presence of the Lord. So enter in. Use these times of refreshing, to uh, these times of the presence of the Lord for refreshing. But number two, why? As we do that, God reforms all things. That's the purpose of the shaking. He's reforming all things. And when He's done that, He's going to send Jesus, the one that we have heard about, the one that has been preached to you about. Now, I'm saying to you, this is what Scripture says. I can't prophesy and say to you, this wave that is coming is Jesus coming. Amen? Would this not be awesome? But this is what the Bible says. So refreshing, because reformation will shake out of you all the things that can be shaken, so that only the unshakable may stand. And then He may come, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So push the refresh button in the midst of the shaking. Number two, set your heart towards the highway. Or you can put it a higher way. There is a highway of holiness that we are all called to walk together. And many exits exist that focuses us away from what we need to. And that is our upward calling God. 
and there are things that we don't understand, but keep your eyes and keep your heart to the higher way. In the book of Hebrews, the uh, writer says that through the body and through the blood of Jesus, He has made for us a new and a living way into the presence of God. And that's the way. The Bible says God's ways are higher than our ways. Is that true? I'm talking about the, the upside down kingdom. Have you ever thought about this? From the womb to the tomb. I spoke about it last year. Jesus came into the earth through a no entry sign. Think about that. And he left this earth through a no exit sign. The womb and the tomb. The virgin birth and death in a tomb. Isn't that incredible? God's ways are higher than our ways. <laughs> Sometimes we just don't understand. But in the moments we don't understand, we need to hold on to His hand. Good news is that He writes His ways in our hearts and in our minds through His Holy Spirit. Last one, don't turn back from the city of our God. In this season of the shaking, don't turn back from the city of our God. Hebrews 12 verse 22 to 24 says, But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, verse 23, to the general assembly of the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all, to the spirits of the just man made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks of better things than the blood of Abel. We have come. It's already done. We're already there. The blood of Abel speaks about vengeance. The blood of Jesus speaks about forgiveness, reconciliation. We have come to the city of the living God, to the general assembly of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, and it's called His church. So this is a prophetic warning from Jesus. Jesus had the church in mind. In the shaking, many is turning away from the Lord's city. But the church, the Lord's city, is His refuge. It is your strength. It is fatal in this time to turn away from the city of the Lord because of what is coming next. What is coming next. So, when the wave comes, it can either sweep you up, accelerate you into what comes next, or it can cause utter devastation. So turn back to the safety of the city of the Lord. To Zion, the holy mountain of the Lord, the church. And the Bible says His grace will be sufficient for every seed.